I'm David Lombardo for AIN TV, and I'm here with Francis Archambault, who's an engineer for Talos. Uh, we're sitting in what looks like a flight simulator, but it's actually an innovative new piece of equipment to help original equipment manufacturers. Uh, Francis, what exactly is this? Basically what it is, it's a, it's a unit to do early validations with the OEMs. So instead of, when, for example, if you change one, one of the display before it was taking a lot of time, it was engineering large process. Now we do that with the pilot, with the engineer. It's, re, it's highly pilot-centric units and you can change that within 24 hours or so. So, so if, if I were to say, okay, I like the way you have this display, but I would like this particular item in the upper left-hand corner, instead of building a new instrument to show me what it looks like, you can do that in software. Exactly, and we're using a, a tool set of software that can be easily ported during development phase to the applications, real application that will be ported in the aircraft. And then this will actually fly somewhat in the manner of a simulator. You can actually go out and fly the instruments then? Yes, and the idea was mainly to obviously to use as much as possible real equipment, real cockpit controls to uh, make the, uh, the simulation realistic, but showing to the pilot how it looks like. So we're trying to make it as realistic as possible. So it isn't just an abstract engineering concept by saying you want to move this. You can then actually put a pilot in it and see, in a practical sense, is it really workable? That's exactly that. And uh, we're using, uh, as I say, as much as real equipment. And on this specific IDEC unit, we make the integration of uh, cockpit controls to make it even more realistic. Well, why don't we take it up and see how it works. Okay, so what we're doing here today, it's mainly, we'll take off from runway 08 in Paris, shall uh, What I will do, for example, ma mainly we will use the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the auto throttle on takeoff, then we'll put that on autopilot, and we'll fly it, and we'll see the different displays going okay, on. Okay, let's go. So, gear down, flaps 30 degrees, okay, autopilot. Here we go. Throttle's moving. We're rolling. So you got steering here, steering wheel that it's connected, pedals, one, one way center line, 100 knots. V1 is 155, and well, VR is about 165. So V1, rotation, we're flying. So you see all the display of the airport. I'm flying the aircraft actually. I'm removing the two throttle just to flying manually. And this is it. So now I can put it on autopilot. We'll put that on the autopilot here. So during, for example, during a climb phase, we can validate all the graphics, if it makes sense, how we want to, to transform that. Define the SVS is the right image that we want and uh, all the interface in terms of men machine interface well located working well having all the controls in right positions and this is what we do we do a real flight at a very early stage to validate concept and the graphics and is this replicating the basic layout of an actual cockpit Basically not. We mainly use different units, and this is that was one of the objectives: is to use different units to to see how we are flexible to use different types of, of, of interfaces. Basically, obviously, we did try to get the ergo, ergonomics uh, right. Basically, well, in a time when money is tight, anything that can help a manufacturer cut costs has got to be a good thing. For AIN TV, I'm David Lombardo.